Okay, so we have all the S3 storage classes that I could fit in here. The only one that's not here is reduced redundancy storage. The intelligent tiering have their own access tiers, but they're reutilizing existing uh, tiers in here. So I'm not going to uh, include them redundantly here. Uh, let's talk about uh, this matrix. It's not perfect, but it was the best way I could fit everything into one screen. So durability, as I promised, is 11 nines across the board. Notice I highlighted the one zones uh, because they are special. They operate in a single AZ. And because of that, yes, they have 11 nines of durability in that AZ because they're replicating copies of the data in that single AZ. But if that whole AZ goes out, you're going to lose that data. So from that perspective, from a multi-AZ perspective, it's not as durable, um, but it still gets 11 nines technically. For availability, it obviously varies. Standard is uh, the highest. Then we have intelligent tiering, which it says 99.9, .9, but it really, I think it's gonna be really dependent on whatever it's utilizing underneath. Um, for standard IA, it has 99.9. Uh, uh, .9. For Glacier Incident, it's 99.9. .9. Then the one zones are gonna drop to, uh, well, one zone IA is a 0.5, and this one is 0.95. So, and I don't think that's a mistake. I think it is 0.5 on that one. Glacier Flexible and Archive, they don't specify uh, because you don't get them immediately, right? You get them minutes later, so it's not really uh, the same level of availability, and that's why we mark them as NA. For AZs, everything pretty much operates in three or more, with the exception of the one zones. For minimum capacity charge per object, um, standard IA and one zone IA is going to have 128 kilobytes. In fact, I think you have to have at least 128 kilobytes uh, for these uh, these ones in particular for IA. For flexible and deep archive, these ones are a bit special because that's coming from the metadata and um, it's on top of whatever you're putting in there. So it's not, oh, I'm only gonna put a 40 kilobyte file in, it's I put a file in, it's gonna add 40 kilobytes to the file. Um, so that is something that is happening there. For minimum storage duration, uh, for intelligent tiering, at least 30 days because it has to analyze the file for 30 days before it can move it to somewhere else. Um, as far as I understand, that's how it works. Um, I could be wrong on that, where it's not 100%, you're gonna be charged for the 30 days, but for this to be effective, it needs to be in there for 30 days to move it to another tier. For standard IA and uh, one zone IA, you have to have them uh, for 30 days. If you put an object in there and you try to take it out, you're gonna get still charged for 30 days. For instant and flexible, it's 90 days. For Glacier Deep Archive, it's a minimum of 180 days. And you know, if you lock down your stuff, Right, it's gonna. You can't get it out there for. Uh, you're gonna pay whatever the 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 permanent lock has in place for retention holds. So retrieval fee. Um, we're only gonna see those for standard IA, one zone IA, uh, Glacier Instant Flexible, all, all those archival tiers there. Uh, for uh, first byte latency, Express One Zone is single digits. Everything else is milliseconds, even Glacier Instant. And then these ones obviously vary based on how fast you want your data. Um, for intelligent tiering, there's additional monitoring costs to use that um, that knowledge underneath. Remember, intelligent tiering is basically doing kind of what life cycles does, but automatically for you. And then Express One Zone has an additional charge for requests for files larger than 512 kilobytes. They want you to serve up smaller files, and they're charging you if you go for larger files. So that's the logic there. Okay.